Over the past six years, I've grown my trading portfolio from $700 to over $150,000. And my corporate account, that one went over $3 million. But let me tell you, the path to get there was anything but a smooth straight line up. I've seen my account blow up multiple times. I've made mistakes that cost me thousands in seconds. There were so many times I felt like throwing in the towel and walking away but I'm so glad I didn't give up. I kept learning, refining my skills, and working on mastering my mindset and emotions, and it's paid off way more than I could have ever imagined. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through every single step I would take to grow a training account from zero to a million dollars. This is my blueprint for what I believe is the most direct path to life-changing wealth through trading. Now, fair warning, I'm going deep. So if you don't have the focus and commitment to watch this video, even if it could help you achieve financial financial freedom, you should probably click away now. But if you're serious, if you're ready to put in the work, I encourage you to watch this entire video and actually implement what I'm about to share. It could honestly change your life. So the first question, how much money do you realistically need to start trading? Well, you can open an account with as little as a few hundred bucks, but remember, only trade with an amount that you're comfortable losing. If you have a hundred bucks to spare, start with that. That's honestly enough to give you some cushion as you're learning. More important than your account size is your mindset. Trading is a skill that takes time, discipline, and practice to develop. You need to be mentally prepared that you're likely gonna lose money at first as you learn, and that's okay. Your first goal shouldn't be to make a ton of money right away. It actually would be bad if that happened, and I'll tell you why later. It should be to learn how to trade well. Adopt the mentality of a humble student and commit to continuously educating yourself. In terms of time commitment, if you're starting small, you can begin trading around your existing job. But if you wanna get serious about day trading, you need to carve out dedicated time to learn and practice. When I started, I was putting in about two to three hours per day outside of my nine to five job, and most of my weekends were spent studying charts and reviewing my trades. Be ready to dedicate real focused time and effort. If you can do that and you can follow this process, you could start seeing consistent profits within six to 12 months. Your first few months of trading are critical. It's when a lot of people develop bad habits and end up blowing up their accounts later on. So here's what I recommend to start off on the right foot. First, educate yourself like crazy. The first book I always tell people to read is Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. It's all about developing the right trading psychology. The Disciplined Trader, also by Mark Douglas, is also required reading if you're going to get serious about trading. Soak up knowledge wherever you can get it. Books, videos, podcasts, courses, soak it up. The next thing is the most important thing that most beginner traders don't do, and it's costing them big time. Start a trading journal from day one. This is non-negotiable. In your journal, log the details of every trade, the setup, your entry and exit, and most importantly, how you were feeling before, during, and after the trade. Over time, you'll start to see a pattern in what works for you and what doesn't. You can identify your strengths and weaknesses. Journaling is hands down one of the most powerful tools for improving as a trader. Beyond that, commit to always learning and refining your craft. The markets are dynamic, and if you don't evolve, you'll be left behind. The best traders I know are relentlessly obsessed with markets and improving their edge. Make learning about trading your passion. Last thing, when you're starting out, just pick one market and master it. Do not try to trade crypto and Forex and stocks, just pick one. And I personally prefer crypto and get really good at it. Each market has its own style and you need to learn the personality of the one you trade. Before we get into strategies, it's really important that you assess yourself based on the time you have. If you don't have time to actively trade, you could go for bot trading, which runs 24 seven with less stress. But if you have more time for trading and prefer a more hands-on approach, you could do active trading like scalping, swing trading, and AB trading. When I first started trading, I started learning everything I could about pretty much every popular indicator. Moving averages, RSI, MACD, the Ichimoku cloud, you name it. But I found that more often than not, these indicators would give conflicting signals. One might say buy while another said sell. It was confusing and led to a lot of indecision. What I needed was a single reliable tool that could give me a clear picture of the market's direction. And that's when I started working on ideas for the TBO indicator. TBO stands for trending breakout. The TBO is designed to do one thing 
and one thing only, identify and confirm the strength of the trend or lack thereof. Here's why trend trading is so incredibly effective. With trend trading, you stay in winning positions far longer than other traders do, maximizing your profit potential exponentially. A few big winners can make a huge difference in your overall profitability. And the TBO is the perfect tool for trend trading. The real magic happens when the TBO prints a breakout symbol, that white dot right there. If the TBO prints three of those in a row, there's a high chance of an explosive breakout to the upside, leading to some serious gains. It's that simple. Of course, in real time trading, it's not always that easy. You have to use the TBO in conjunction with other forms of technical analysis, like trend lines, price-based support resistance levels, and pattern recognition. But as a core trend following tool, I found the TBO to be unmatched. The TBO also helps with timing exits. If I'm in a long position, meaning buy low and sell on high, and I see a TBO close long symbol, that blue dot right there on the chart, that's a sign that momentum could be fading. The trend could be changing, and it might be time to take some profit out of the position. And if the TBO prints an open short symbol, confirming a bearish downtrend, that's a clear signal to cut the trade entirely. Since I've started using the TBO, my trading has become much simpler and more stress-free. I no longer feel like I'm fighting against my indicators. Instead, I have a clear objective tool that I trust to keep me on the right side the market. Of course, the TBO isn't a magic bullet, no single indicator is, but I can honestly say that this one tool has done more for my trading than anything else. It's taken a lot of the guesswork and emotion out of the process and allowed me to focus on what really matters, following the trend and managing my risk. Whether you use the TBO or some other tool, the key is to find an indicator or set of indicators that resonate with you and that help to clarify your decision-making process. Once you have that, the next step is to build a complete trading plan around it, one with clear rules for entry and exit and risk management. That's how you take an indicator from a neat tool to a full-fledged trading system. This is how fortunes are made in the markets, not by nailing the exact top or the bottom, but by catching the meat of the move, the bulk of the trend. It's not uncommon for a single big trend trade to make your entire year. That is the power of trend trading, and it's why I'm so passionate about the TBO. Of course, no single indicator is perfect, and trend trading does have its challenges. You have to be patient, disciplined and willing to give back some of your unrealized gains when the trend eventually turns. But in my experience, the payoff is more than worth it. Here are a few examples you can choose from based on your time availability and risk tolerance. If you're a more active trader and you have the time and desire to closely monitor the markets, here are your options. Swing trading. This involves riding the waves of volatility, typically off the four hour and the daily charts. These trades typically take longer than a day to close. Scalping. This is a high intensity strategy where you're making dozens of trades per day, trying to skim a few percent off each move. AB trading. This is something unique to what I teach here on YouTube and at the better traders. AB trading is all about focusing on low volume charts, ideal for people with smaller accounts, by the way, and maximizing a thin order book with wild swings to make big repeated profits with three strategies, aftershock pumps, fat finger fishing, and channel trading. On the other hand, if you don't have the time or desire to actively trade, you're not out of luck. In fact, some of the most successful crypto investors take a more passive approach using bots like DCA bots or grid bots. The beauty of these bot strategies strategies is that they take emotion out of the equation. You set your parameters and let the bot do its work, freeing up your time and your mental capacity. And remember, there's no one size fits all approach to this. The best strategy is the one you can stick to consistently over time. Whether that's actively trading the volatility or passively accumulating with bots, the principles of sound risk management and emotional discipline still apply. This might sound crazy, but I actually spend about 10 times more planning my exits than my entries. Why? Because it doesn't matter how much of a genius you are at picking winners, if you don't sell at the right time, you won't realize those gains. The sin of crypto trading is getting married to a coin and thinking you'll hold it until you can buy a Lambo. I mean, if you do this, you're risking watching your paper gains evaporate in every correction. Instead, you need a systematic approach to taking profit 
on the way up. One that locks in gains while still keeping you exposed to the upside. My mantra for this is that I'm going to protect my portfolio at all costs. This simply means that if my trades in profit, I'm going to move my stop loss into the profit zone and continue moving the stop loss up. Your primary goal as a trader should be to protect your portfolio. So here's a couple ideas. The first way is to use the TBO indicator and identify when a trend might be weakening, whether you're in a long position or in a short position. And there are symbols for both long and short positions, by the way, with the TBO. Secondly, check out the TBO close long if you're in a long position or the TBO close short if you're in a short position. These are early warning systems, early warning alerts that will let you know when the trend could be reversing. So you might want to take some profits before the trend changes. And lastly, the TBO cloud pierces. This is when the price actually wicks into the cloud, whether if you're in a long position, it's wicking down, or if you're in a short position, it's wicking up. But it's letting you know that if you pierce the cloud, it's kind of like piercing a balloon that has tape over it. While you pierce it, it's not going to deflate right away. But as soon as you pierce it, the air is going to start to come out of it. And eventually that trend is going to weaken over time. Same concept. Another way is using split targets available on three commas or all trading. I like to divide my sell order into smaller positions to secure profit on the way up and de-risk my position in the process. The TBO is great at identifying historical support and resistance levels where I'll want to place my split target sell orders. I don't overcomplicate things by adding tons of targets, nor do I bother setting crazy, super high targets up a thousand percent for every trade, unless the chart has potential, but I tend to stick to using two or three targets and like using 50-50 for two targets or 30-40-30 for three targets. And if you're just looking for stupid, simple, the best approach is going to be using basic support and resistance lines to guide your profit taking. And the TBO, once again, makes this even easier by automatically identifying support and resistance lines and draws them right on the chart. As the price approaches a resistance level, start scaling out of your position. You could sell a third at the first level, another third at the next level, and so on. We talked about percentage values before, but honestly, the idea is to gradually reduce your exposure as the trade moves in your favor. This is what I call de-risking a position. If price price breaks through a resistance level, that level then becomes support. You can use these flips as opportunities to add back to your position if the TBO is still bullish. The beauty of this approach is that it takes advantage of the powerful FOMO driven moves in crypto while still protecting you from sudden reversals. By the time you're taking profits, you've locked in a big chunk of your gains and you're playing with the house's money. If the price keeps grinding higher, great. You can let the rest of your position ride or even add back on dips. But if it sharply corrects, you're not giving back all your gains because you took profit on the way up or on the way down if it's a short position. All right, let's say you've been studying for a while. You've spent time paper trading with a fake account and now you're ready to put some real money on the line. Here's how I'd approach it with a small account of around $1,000. At this stage, we're in what I call compounding mode. You're not trying to go for moonshots and 5X your account overnight. That's how a lot of small accounts get blown up, honestly. Instead, the focus is on making consistent incremental gains and gradually growing your account over time. My biggest recommendation is to start out with paper trading and only switch to real money once you're profitable. A lot of people are in a rush to start with real money, but those early days of practicing without the pressure are so valuable. Take a few months at least, pick one strategy and learn it inside and out and only switch to real money once you've proven to yourself that you can profit consistently. And once you do, start with less size than you were with paper trading. As helpful as paper trading is, it is not the same as using real money. Start with like 10% of what you're using with paper trading when you switch to real funds. Once you get more comfortable, then you can scale up your order sizes. When I funded my first live account, it was only $700. I wanted to risk an amount I could afford to lose while I was still learning. My goal is just to finish each month in the green, even if it was only by a dollar. I focused on taking smart setups, not big profit targets. Slowly, my win rate improved and my account started to grow. The key at this stage is to be disciplined and patient. When you find a strategy that works, just keep executing it. Don't get greedy and add more to your orders just because you want to make more money faster. Focus on the process and only increase your trade size as your account grows. Everyone has their own preference on this, but I recommend using no more than 10% of your portfolio for trade. It's also crucial to log all of your trades so that you can review your performance. Let's say your strategy is a scalping strategy with a mediocre 50% win rate and a two to one profit target. That means if you place 100 trades, you should expect to win 50 of them 
and your winners should be twice as big as your losers on average. So if you're risking like 10 bucks per trade, you should be making $20 on your winners. Over 100 trades, that's an expected profit of $500, which is 50 winners times $20 profit, minus the 50 losers at a $10 loss. Of course, that's just an average. In the short run, anything can happen. You might hit a lucky streak and make $1,000, or you might have a bad run and lose 200. The key is to trust your trading strategy and keep putting in the reps, guys. As long as your actual results are in line with your expected results over a large sample of trades, you're on the right track. Risk management is also so important at this stage. You need to decide what level of risk is acceptable for each trade. And again, I recommend risking no more than 10% of your account on any single trade. So if you have a $1,000 account, your maximum loss per trade should be $100. However, if you're looking to aggressively scale an amount quickly, you could bump up your size per trade to 25% of your account. The benefit of using 25% of your account per trade is that you limit yourself to only four positions at a time. This makes you extremely picky with your trades, which is actually a really good thing. But the truth about position sizing is that your gut will tell you what your limit is every time. What do I mean? If you place a trade with 25% of your account and you instantly feel sick or nauseous or regret what you just did, that amount is above your limit. If you can't sleep at night because you're worried about an open position, that amount is above your limit. You're gut will seriously tell you when you're putting too much size into a trade. Also, don't fall into the trap of system hopping. A lot of new traders will abandon a perfectly good strategy after a couple of losing trades to chase some new indicator or methodology. I did that actually. It's very embarrassing, but super true. Seriously, stick to your guns, trust the process and let your edge play out. Hopping around will just lead to frustration and missed opportunities. So let's say you've grown your account from $1,000 to $10,000 and have a strategy that's working. First off, well done. So how do you attack the next stage of growth? up to $100,000. For me, this was the stage where I really focused on optimizing my strategy and increasing my trading volume. I cannot emphasize that enough, you guys. I was more confident in my ability to profit consistently, so I started looking for ways to get my capital working harder for me. This middle stage of growth is all about smart, aggressive expansion. Look for high probability setups with juicy risk to reward ratios. Don't be afraid to hold trades for longer if the setup calls for it. Trend trading wins in the long term. Remember, this is the time to start turning those consistent base hits into occasional home runs. But you've got to balance that aggression with discipline and good risk management. Use hard stop losses. Mental stops will fail you as the pressure increases. Be willing to cut trades quickly if the setup invalidates. And even though your account is bigger, you might struggle with using 25% or even 10% of your account for trade. So let your gut be your guide. You want to avoid big drawdowns that threaten your confidence and undo all of your progress. Okay, now we're at the stage a lot of people dream about. Taking your trading from $100,000 up to a cool million and beyond. The strategies and techniques really aren't that different from the earlier stages. It's your mindset that has to evolve. At this point, your biggest enemy is complacency. When you're making a good living from your trading, it's easy to take your foot off the gas, not study the markets as intently, or start making emotional trades. But that's exactly how you give back your profits. When the money gets big, you have to get even more disciplined not less. I distinctly remember when I first crossed into six-figure territory. I felt like I had made it. I mean, for a few months, I actually got a little bit lazy with my journaling and I let my emotions get the better of me. I started revenge trading after some losses. Again, a very big no-no. And I remember one specific day when Bitcoin had a surprise pullback and I lost $9,000 in a single day. That was a huge wake up call for me. I realized that the game I was playing was different. At this stage, it was more about preserving capital than making more. Protecting my capital and the integrity of my trading strategy had to come first. So I got stricter about only taking the absolute best setups. Trades where I felt the probabilities were stacked 
far in my favor. I was willing to go days without placing a trade if I didn't see anything I liked. I also got much more ruthless about cutting losses. In my earlier days, I'd sometimes let small losers turn into big ones, hoping the market would come back. Big capital? Can't do that. I started cutting trades at the very first sign that my thesis was wrong. Bigger picture, I knew that one big loss could set me back months. So capital preservation became my top priority. That's really the key shift as you start trading bigger money. It's not about making the most money. It's about protecting what you've built. It's cliche, but the first rule of trading really is don't lose money. Respect the risks, stay disciplined, and be willing to take a dull day over a reckless one. Do that consistently and the profits will come. The bull run is here. And if you're ready to take your trading to the next level, watch this video right here to see how you can get rich in the 2024 bull run. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.